Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 5th July 2020. I am Sagan I used to work in IT. Now I have retired. I am showing trading stocks using the Q systems and techniques that I develop. This is my email ID, my YouTube channel, Twitter handle, and traders forum. I regularly share live market and stock analysis in these forums. They are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Disclaimer, this demonstration is for educational purposes only. I am not an investment advisor. It is not a trade recommendation. Trading involves risk. You and only you are solely responsible for the outcome of your trades. As usual, in today's session, I will demonstrate the use of 360 degrees analysis techniques to look at the oil and gold, two commodities, and then look at the market, sectors, industries, and stocks, trying to identify high probability and low risk trades. These are the systems that I will use. For technical analysis, scanning and charting, I will use Q Elite running on TradeStation and Q Global Q Finder running on Metastock. For stock fundamental and peer analysis, I use Q Vital. For sector industry rotation analysis in real time, I use Q Edge. For market and index analysis, I use Q Index. All these systems can be run in 100% real time mode. That was the last slide of my presentation. I will now continue with the live system. I am beginning my analysis with oil ETF USO. I am using Q Elite at a glance template to analyze it. At a glance template is the combination of the weekly backdrop chart template and daily entry or hop on chart template. In the weekly chart, after displaying the bullish headwind, USO recovered. For past several weeks, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 weeks, it is moving inside a narrow range. The weekly backdrop color is remaining bullish. Looking at that, in the last market roundup, I mentioned that I was not going to take any short trade. Another reason for not taking any short trade was that in the daily chart, there was and it is still there, a memory trend line support. It seems from the weekly daily chart that the next move of oil will be to the upside. The same view that I held in the previous market roundup as well. Gold ETF GLD in the weekly chart price is supported by a memory trend line support. This week's candle backdrop color is bullish, however the shape is indecisive. In the daily chart, price is going up. It is supported by multiple memory trend line support. Price is close to the upper boundary line. That is too extended for me to take any new long trade. And it is supported by memory support. That is why I am not going to take any short trade either. After the commodities, I am reviewing the market futures, E-mini futures, starting with E-mini S&P 500 futures ES. I am using Q Global on Metastock for that, and I am analyzing it using the daily entry chart template. E-mini S&P 500 is moving inside a triangle pattern bound by resistance memory trend line at the top and support memory trend line at the bottom. It is moving inside a narrow range now. Unless it can break out in the upward direction or the downward direction, it may not be safe to take any directional trade. 
DAO futures YM it is also moving inside a range bound by resistance memory and support memory my view of YM is same as ES unless it breaks out of the narrow range it may not be safe to take any directional trade Russell 2000 futures RTY it is also bound by resistance and support memory however the resistance memory is some distance away the support memory is very close to last test close therefore I am certainly not going to take any short trade unless RTY can break down below the memory support whereas if it can go up from here there is some distance before it hits the memory resistance line therefore if price can go up from here I may look for a buying opportunity either in Russell 2000 itself or in some small cap stock the last of the four market futures NASDAQ futures NQ it is in a clear uptrend it is the strongest of the four market futures price is supported by multiple memory trend line support there is no memory trend line resistance therefore I am certainly not looking for any shorting opportunity here price is close to the upper boundary line therefore I am not looking for a buy setup also now the last buying opportunity might have come on this day which was a go with flow long trade setup that is the trend following long trade setup that we have in Q systems that was a view of the market futures what about the market ETFs are they any different let's have a look at the market ETFs and this time I am using Q Elite on trade station I am using the weekly daily at a glance template in the daily chart similar to the e-mini futures price is inside a triangle pattern in the weekly chart we can see that price recovered a lot and now for one two three four five for five weeks price is not able to go up it's moving inside a range there is a memory resistance nearby what does it show if we take a step back we can see a big recovery then a sideways move near a memory resistance therefore the weekly chart is telling us that there is a possibility price will come down from here the daily is telling that unless the memory support is broken don't take any short trend that is what we are going to follow we are going to wait patiently unless price can come below the memory support line and if that happens that may give lucrative shorting opportunity on the other hand if price goes above the memory resistance in daily and the memory resistance in weekly only then you may look for a buying opportunity dia using the attic lens template same picture as we saw in SPY a strong recovery then a five week sideways move in the weekly chart that is happening near a memory resistance if daily can break below the memory support you may look for a shorting opportunity and for buying opportunity you may wait for the price to break above both the daily as well as the weekly memory resistance line IWM same picture again a strong recovery followed by a sideways move near memory resistance in the weekly chart presence of the memory resistance is telling us that there is a likelihood for the price to come down you may look for a shorting opportunity only if the daily memory support is broken 
and on the long side you may look for a buying opportunity only if the daily as well as the weekly memory resistance lines are broken. QQQ we saw that Nasdaq futures in Q was the strongest and the Nasdaq ETF QQQ is also the strongest. In the weekly it is sharply going up there is no memory resistance therefore I am not expecting it to come down. In the daily there is a memory support line unless that support is broken I am not going to look for any shorting opportunity. Just as was true for the futures, the ETF is also very close to the upper boundary line that is too extended for me to look for a buy setup. Therefore I am neither going to look for shorting opportunity nor am I going to look for buying opportunity in QQQ right now. We saw that the market futures and market ETFs, most of them are moving sideways. That may tell us that the sectors are moving in an up-down, up-down fashion as well. In the market roundup several weeks ago, I showed from many different angles, all using Q systems, that the markets, sectors, industries, everything were moving in up-down fashion. And that is continuing this week. This is a sector performance picture from one week ago. That time I compared the one week performance with previous week's performance. At that time all the sectors were down and one week prior to that seven sectors were up, four were down. Therefore one week ago the sectors turned to bearish from bullish. If the up down up down move is continuing then this week we would expect to be bullish isn't it? Let's see what actually happened. This is the same sector performance picture but it is for the current week. We expected it to be bullish and that is true nine sectors are up and only two are down one week ago all the sectors were down therefore it changed from a bearish picture to a bullish picture showing that the up down up down move is continuing if we take a longer term view then we can see that over one month period the sectors are more or less balanced slightly more bearish than bullish over one month five sectors are up six are down over two week period four are up seven are down therefore over two week it is more bearish and over one week period last five days it is more bullish if the up down up down move continues then we will expect next week to be down and if that happens then you may look for shorting opportunities. Let's see how the sectors move on the last trading day of the week that was Thursday Friday was a market holiday on Thursday the market was bullish at the sector level eight sectors were up and three were down. Time to make a call on the market outlook and prefer trading direction. What is my market outlook? That is neutral. Why is it neutral? Because most of the market futures and market ETFs, barring NASDAQ, they are moving inside a range. Sectors are also moving in an up-down fashion. When that happens, I have to keep my market outlook as neutral. What is my preferred trading direction? I am not having any preferred trading direction as of the weekend. There are memory support lines as well as memory resistance lines on the market ETFs and market futures. 
if the supports are broken I am going to look for shorting opportunities if the resistances are broken then I am going to look for buying opportunities and I may be ready with some trade candidates both for the long side and the short side and take them depending on how the market moves next week I mentioned that I am going to be ready with both long as well as short candidates how am I going to identify those opportunities using key systems I may use a top-down analysis to identify them or I could use the bottom-up analysis one way to carry out the bottom-up analysis is to execute Q scans first for running Q scans you could run the individual scans to look for bounce box breakout go with flow that is trend following setups etc or you could run these two combo scans Q finder bearish and Q finder bullish you may run it on a large list of stocks here I ran it on a list of stocks that are liquid and that also have at least five years history what these two combo scans will do is that they will identify all the different possible Q bullish signals as well as Q bearish signals on this large list of stocks that way you don't have to run the individual Q scans you may run only these two combo scans and try to find trading opportunities from there I have already run the two combo scans let's now use the Q finder tool to visualize the result here you can see all the Q signals that appeared on the last trading day both on the bearish side as well as bullish side and the chart helps us to visualize it the pie charts show that 68 percent of the symbols had Q bullish signals and 32 percent about half of the bullish number had bearish signals if you count the total number of signals the ratio is about the same double the number of bullish signals than bearish signals the signals themselves are classified under three categories strength signals continuation signals and trend reversal signals strength signals are predominantly bullish the green bars are much bigger than the red bars the same is true for trend continuation signals the green bars are much bigger than the red bars whereas for the reversal signals it seems to be more bearish because the red bars are bigger than the green bars how can it help us if we are looking for a buy setup we may look for a stock that is giving a go with flow setup that is the trend following setup and will be happier if it also gives a breakout setup and a gap up move is that likely yes it is likely because I can see a large number of stocks gapped up those gap ups might have been associated with breakout and the breakouts might also give a go with flow trend following long trade setup let's try to find such a trade for that I go to the bullish tab I can place my cursor anywhere in the breakout column and click the flag icon that will flag me all the breakout setups next I go to anywhere in the gap column click the flag icon again that's going to further select stocks that are giving both gap as well as breakout setup last step I will go to the go with flow that is trend following long setup column and click the flag icon again 
now I am left with only 14 stocks that are giving gap breakout and go with flow all these three setups together I can see out of that 14 stocks only three are also going up with high bullish pressure why don't I look at these three stocks for opening these three stocks charts you may simply highlight the three stocks you can highlight anywhere not necessarily the stock name you can highlight anywhere on the three rows and click the chart icon that will open the three stocks using Q Global on Metastock this is the first one of them TTMI I am looking at it using Q entry daily chart template on Q Global running on Metastock it opened higher but then it moved down therefore I am not going to look for a buy setup on this stock right now let's look at the next stock HIBB this is giving me a bearish shape candle on the last trading day it broke out of the memory resistance but ended with a bearish shape candle therefore I am not going to look for a buy setup right now the last stock was NUS this is looking very bullish it had a large gap up move it had a bullish flow color therefore it is giving a possible go with flow trend following long trade setup in this case it is actually giving a breakout setup because it broke out of the memory resistance and the flow color turned bullish and it had a very big gap up open as well it went up with extreme bullish pressure and very high volume let's look at this stock using weekly daily at a glance template for that I am using Q Elite now running on Tristation. Again we can see the same pattern in daily chart breaking out from memory resistance giving bullish flow candle having a big gap up move with bullish pressure extreme high activity in the daily chart. What about the weekly chart? Weekly chart is also very bullish therefore when we combine weekly and daily both we are able to take a breakout gap high pressure combined trade setup how could you trade it if next day price goes up above the high of this candle you might take a long position and place stop just below the candles low we could identify the trade using Q Finder. That Q Finder is running on Q Global, that is on Metastock. If you are using Q Elite on Tristation, then also you could identify the trade on NUS. You could use Q Sonar, that is the radar on Tristation, or you could use Q Scans. Here is Q Sonar, that is radar running on Q Elite here is the stock anyways if you inserted a list of stocks that had NUS in it on the last trading day then you could instantly identify it as a gap candidate bullish gap shown by cyan color it had a very large gap up move 16.9 percent after that it went up further by another 8 percent closing 24.9 almost 25 percent higher than previous close it gave a breakout signal shown by the green cell under breakout column a go with flow possible trend following long trade setup and it went up with extreme bullish pressure very high activity the signals that you found from Q finder you could also find that from Q 
sonar that is running on QLE on trace station. We saw that technically NMS is giving a possible by setup. What about its fundamentals? For that, I use Q Vital. Here I have used NUS as the rootstock and carried out a fundamental and peer analysis. I can see on the last trading day, 100% of the 17 PR stocks of NUS went up. Therefore, the industry itself was very strong. All the 17 out of 17 stocks went up. About the stocks valuation, Cubital scorecard is showing that the valuation is in the middle neither overvalued nor undervalued and earnings growth actually came down therefore fundamentally this stock is not very strong however it went up strongly on the last trading day by almost 25 percent and it does have a short squeeze potential looking at the medium valuation and the short squeeze potential and very technical pattern on the charts you might look for a buy setup because the earnings growth is negative and coming down you may investigate the stock further trying to find out any reason why the stock moved up so much on the last trading day i will leave that to you but let's look at the stocks industry we already know all the pr stocks went up so in itself the industry personal products is strong what about the industry strength relative to other industries that I find out from QH real-time industry scorecard and here I can see personal products score is in cyan color for quite a long time showing that the industry is strong relative to other industries as well Therefore, we found a stock where the technicals are very strong, industry is very strong relative to others in itself and valuation wise it is in the middle to slightly bearish side. Not the best candidate if you follow the 360 degrees approach but the technicals are very strong and you may keep this stock in mind. If the market is moving up next week, this may be a good buying candidate using a breakout and a gap, high pressure and a goit flow, long trade setup. I identified one possible buying candidate using Q Finder and further analyzed it using Q Vital, Q Edge as well as Q Elite. Why don't I also look for a possible shorting opportunity? For that let me use the very powerful top-down approach starting with QH. This is QH. The pie charts are showing last trading day's result. 73% of the sectors were up, 67% of the industries were up, 63% of the stocks were up. That is the last trading day's result one day's performance. If you ran it during market hours then it would show real time performance. I always keep this running on one of my monitors and the changing pie charts as, as the bar chart here, the real time performance in this bar chart that shows me how the market is strengthening or weakening in real time from a very unique perspective, from the perspective of the sectors, industries and stocks at the same time. That helps me to take the trades in perfect unison with the market. That is why probably I am able to take trades a little bit ahead of others. This QH is the perfect tool for top down analysis also and you can carry that out in real time. Let me demonstrate that. Let me go to the sectors. 
here I am looking at all the sectors scorecard across multiple periods M1 to M12 the 12 monthly periods and then more frequently over 10 day 5 day 2 day and 1 day the scorecard uses heat map magenta represents weakness cyan represents strength you can double click on any column header to sort by that column I sorted by one day performance that is last trading days performance you can see the real time column is blank now if you ran QH during market hours this will also be filled up in real time now market is closed that's why we are using the one day performance for finding shorting candidates I am going to look for the candidates from the weakest sector that makes sense that is the top down analysis communication services was the weakest sector on Thursday the last trading day of the week and the pace column is showing that it was one of the most decelerating sector as well let's now drill down into the communication services industries for that you may put your cursor anywhere on the row and click the gear icon gear stands for the industries it will show you all the industries under communication services sector these are the industries let me sort again by one day performance publishing comes as the weakest one it has the worst score over one day period therefore if I am looking for shorting candidates it makes sense to look for that in the publishing industry I can click the family icon that is going to show me the stocks in this family that is the publishing industry now you have drilled down to all the stocks under publishing industry and you have the stocks Q scorecard for shorting you are going to look for stocks that are overvalued that is valuation is in magenta color and or where the earnings growth is negative you could use the individual smart filters for that or you could use these star filters the three star filters will find very bearish stocks in terms of fundamentals and star filters will also find bearish stocks in terms of fundamentals not as bearish as three stars let me use the star filter red color and I can see these are the bearish candidates out of that NYT is a stock where the valuation is overvalued and the earnings growth in the last quarter is negative plus it is coming down in fact it is flipping from positive earnings growth to negative earnings growth this may be a shorting candidate fundamental are weak industry is very weak the sector is very weak as well what about its technicals let's check out NYT using at a glance template running on Q Elite on trade station the weekly was very strong in this area but for last three weeks it is not able to go up for last two weeks it is displaying bearish shape and doji like candles that is telling us that there is a likelihood the stock may come down from here in the daily chart it displayed several bearish headwind possible reversal signals however there was a memory trend line support because of the memory support we were not going to short it on the last trading day the flow candle color turned bearish and it closed right at the memory support line if it goes down next week that may give a very low risk shorting candidate where the stop could be just above these candles high and you could book partial profit once the ascending yellow direction line is hit you could book partial profit at that time and try to let profit run on the remaining position the next profit target could be the 
green memory support line. This is how you could use QEdge and QElite or QGlobal to carry out a perfect top-down analysis looking for a shorting candidate. You could do the same to look for buying candidates as well. I demonstrated how you are able to use queue systems to carry out bottom-up analysis as well as top-down analysis to find trading candidates. Whichever approach you follow, you would end up with buying candidates where the industry is strong, fundamental is strong and technical is strong and you will end up with shorting candidate where everything is weak. That is all that I wanted to share in today's session. Thank you for attending and I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.